section in your document where this text appears um, pretty much intact? Uh, your text appears completely intact other than other than moving some of the margins around. Yeah, the text okay. itself. Okay. Great. I, so I, I, I did yours and then didn't make any changes to it. So all right. Let's let's go through um, what Alicia said. Yeah, most of my edits are more about language than the actual change in content of what is being said. Yeah. So. Well, and, but we, we also haven't talked about together about what I wrote. So <laughs> we ought to have a shot at that. Okay. Um, so Ms. Pat, yes. Um, I heard uh, some of the conversation, but I was not able to get in until Jennifer let me in. So what documents are we going to be using? Hi, everyone. Um, OK, well, first first of all, uh, I suppose I should have called the meeting to order. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> we, are we live? We, we are we live right now? Yes, we are, oh. we are live. Oh, OK. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, we do not have any uh, members of the public present. No, we <laughs> waited for you, Pat. Yeah, we, I, I was we, hearing everything, but I couldn't find the link quickly. Yeah. Thank you anyways, Jennifer. Uh, so my suggestion is that we start from the document that uh, Alicia recently edited, which is the, uh, and then after we do that, we can go back and look uh, either at Ms. Pat at the version that you had put this text into uh, mm -hmm. or uh, or if Mr. Delaney has a, a version that, that also, I think, includes the, the main, uh, the rest of the boilerplate of the, the, bit, the IFB. Um, <clears throat> so let me ask first, is in general, is this structure and way of organizing it seem workable? I just have a... Go ahead. So I just have a general comment. I think given the timeline that we have, it feels to me that if we were to combine everything, it would be very daunting for whoever gets the contract. Are we thinking of doing a pilot program with this uh, uh, phase two? It's a lot to ask at a very short period of time for any consultant to produce substantive um, work for us. It's just, it's, um, it's um, it, from my observation, it's uh, unattainable, it's a lot. It seems to me like a one year project, literally, not to talk about weeks, it's a lot. I mean, it's good, it's all good stuff. So I, I guess the question would be, um, what is the town manager is willing for us to hunt on or maybe the working group or, or perhaps Mr. Delaney can help us out. It's just a lot in few weeks, in a couple months for them to produce. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point we're working with a deadline of the end of June um, and I mean, maybe we can get that changed, but um, I think, I mean, my sense was we need to know about police procedures, what's recommended and how does fit and not fit. Uh, we need to know about um, <clears throat> citizen oversight and how we go about creating a, an ongoing board. Uh, and I think they're going to you know, I could have put C in with the procedures, but I thought the issue of accountability and supervision and consequences, you know, was sort of its own category. Um, I, I don't see how we can, I don't see how we can make our report at the end of June without this information. Now, you know, yes, it could be a year to gather all of it, but <clears throat> Jennifer? I, I still think that one of the prime recommendations, even if 
you don't recommend that CSWG become a standing committee is that you at least ask for that June 30th deadline to be extended out because it's, I mean, I think we're just trying to do, or you guys are trying to do a lot in a very little bit of time, but we, you guys can't rush this work necessarily. So um, I just, I think that you guys should seriously consider either having a, a subgroup out out of the CSWG that extends out past June or just extending the CSWG past June. Um, yeah. yeah. Ms. Pat? So I, I honestly see the work of uh, CSWG in, thank you Ms. Uh, Ms. Marston for your comment. I, I actually see our work being beyond one year. So, that's how I say, it. I, you know, what we can do tonight is maybe do we want to do phase three from this project? If we want to produce something for June, but I think we should extend it to fall. We should ask for extension at least through fall. And I'm thinking October, November. And that's been very generous with time. Mm -hmm. If we want to do this really well, yeah. Alicia? Um, I just wanted to agree with Ms. Pat. I was also have been concerned about the timeline um, and just like, I, I want the quality of our work to be good. Um, and so I worry about rushing it and about putting or expecting a consulting group to be able to do all of these things well in this amount of time. Um, so I think we should absolutely consider an extension I think if all of the members are willing that we should extend the group because I think we're, I don't think we're going to be at a point where we're ready to finish at the end of this. I guess my own take on it is that some group like us, I think needs to function indefinitely. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Community safety doesn't end just be when you guys end, right? Right. Like public and I, safety continues. I mean, in yeah. some sense, I don't want us to end until we have created a citizen oversight board uh, that has some some power and, and ability to continue to supervise, make recommendations for changes uh, on, you know, for year after year. Uh, Anthony. I will just uh, echo the other comments. I would, you know, I would tend to agree with Ms. Pat that this looks like uh, it could be a year's worth of work just in this uh, phase two here. And I think um, you know, a recommendation from the committee to the town council that they, I also think that you probably couldn't do it with the money you have left. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I think a recommendation to town council that they appropriate the money for this study um, in the future uh, and and you know maybe present maybe present them with this uh, with this procurement to that end, but I think uh, if the if you if we finished this tonight, the full committee approves it next week. It goes live the first week of March. You have someone signed the second week of March. Uh, that gives them two months. <laughs> Uh, to, to do the work and then, write, and then write the report in the final month, it's uh, you're not going to get good work. <clears throat> Alicia? Um, I just have a follow up question to what Mr. Delaney was speaking about um, because he did mention that <clears throat> we may not have enough money left to support this. And I just want to know what that actually means because so if this were to go live and then we didn't have enough money to support it, what, like, what does that mean? Uh, if the bids came in and the, and you couldn't afford the lowest bid or the, or the recommended bid, then you wouldn't be able to sign the contract. We, we can't sign a contract if there's no, if there's no appropriation. So it would just be, we're sorry. Alicia? And so, and then also as a follow-up to that, I, would, I needed some clarification again about the amount that we are allowed to spend because I, I do remember we were speaking about some type of cap, uh, like for invitation 
to bid. And just because I'm also not very familiar with this process, I don't know if that's just a universally known thing that there's a cap, but there's nothing actually referencing, referencing a cap in the bid itself. So if we get bids that are, will we get bids that are possibly higher than 50K? And are those things that we just would automatically disqualify those requests? And then in addition to that question, I would wonder then would our 50K have to be split between, between the two phases and that would be the amount that we can spend in total? Uh, first question. So there's no, uh, there's no cap in the law on how much an IFB can be worth. Um, there is a floor for the RFP process, but on the IFB, there is no floor, there is no ceiling. Uh, you can conduct an IFB for any dollar amount. Um, we are limited to our budget, and I do not know that exact number. I believe 80,000 was appropriated for all of the committee's activities, and that would include stipends and uh, advertising costs, and, and I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know how much you have unencumbered right now. Um, what was your second question? I'm sorry. And then, so... I guess, so my second question was that if then our cap, our budget, the 80K would be including both phases of the work. So essentially like for each phase, we wouldn't really be able to accept over 30K because we'd be running out of room in our budget. But also that, sorry, leads me to a third question. Do we have somebody tracking this? Uh, so this... you mean minute meeting notes you mean expenses you know yeah i mean tracking like how much money we've used and how much money we have <laughs> left because it i think i'm uh, my understanding is that our stipends also come out of that and then also <clears throat> so i just don't know what that leaves us with what we would have left right now as of this minute. And then if we're gonna, if the gift cards are gonna come out of that, I'm not sure. Um, and then how we could even calculate that because we don't know the level of participation we're going to receive. So how much we should leave in anticipation for that in addition to then the consulting work that we're asking for lots of stuff from. Okay, so the second question, uh, the simple answer is yes. Um, if you did, if you, you're, you're currently procuring phase one, if you also procured phase two, they would both come out of the same pot of money unless you, I don't think there's an unless this late in the calendar year. I, I think the, there's the money, well, that's kind of a political question, but at the, from an accounting perspective, yeah, that, uh, that 80,000 is all there is for all the committee's activities. Um, Third question, is someone tracking it? The accountant is tracking it and make sure that too, money, too much money is not spent. Um, uh, Jen, if you know the account numbers, I could look them up, but uh, I, I don't, I don't I, tend to operate in that world too much. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't, and I don't know that we've spent any money either yet. So right now we have our pot of money. Well, the other thing is that the money was not actually given to our committee. Uh, the town council set aside 80,000 for racial equity work uh, and the, the town manager has control over that money. Uh, he seems to be willing to have our group spend, spend perhaps all of it, uh, but it's not, we don't actually control the money. And it, so it's, it's not exactly our job to keep track of it. Now, you know, the town manager did say that the two police positions that are on hold are on hold with the idea that they would provide money to get started on the alternative community safety services. Um, so, you know, I don't want to delay that process, um, but presumably there is some money. Uh, I'll just say that, uh, and I'll go back to you in a minute. Um, I'm fine with asking for an extension. Uh, I would be reluctant to break this into pieces for fear that we would get one piece and not get the others or not get to the next part. And I, that, that would trouble me. 
Ms. Pat and then Alicia. So I have a confession to make. Um, that's why I tried to push to, to, that's why I volunteered to be in this subcommittee. When I first saw the document and I did the math, uh, the step in for eight members, 8,000, 8, give and take maybe the 2K for gifts and what other expenses, leaving us with 70. I looked at the four different uh, projects. I knew right away, but I didn't want to alarm anyone at the large group meeting because I was coming from business perspective, um, looking at, you know, personnel costs, you know, labor, everything. I'm like, even the seven day will be really pushing it for even the first phase. So I said, I'm going to right. um, be patient and hold it until the second phase. That way I can like um, speak about how I feel that we don't have enough funding are located to do all the work that is required of us. Even, you know, I'll be surprised, you know, I honestly think some of the debate will come in way more than 70 because I've been doing research myself and see what other communities are, are doing and shelling out for this kind of study. We'll be lucky to, to get groups that will do it within our budget. So. Okay, so, so I hear so, what you're saying, Mr. Ross. Um, I think we should do everything that um, we want from consultants. It's just a you know, question of timing um, so that whoever decides to do it, would, they will do a good job for us. Okay, so the three of us who are the members of the subcommittee here, I, it seems to me we've made an agreement that we would like to extend our time recommend that the time for the community service working group be extended beyond June. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, so let's record that as a yes. unanimous decision of this group. Uh, and I think I also heard a decision that we think more money is needed uh, to be able to hire a consultant to do what we think needs to be done. Yes. And we'd like to ask the town manager to figure out how to fund um, more than the money we have available. Yes. Is that everybody in agreement there? Yes. Okay, so let's record that as a decision that we've made unanimously as a subcommittee. Uh, Jennifer, did you wanna? Well, Alicia had her hand up for a while, so. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I just wanted to say, sorry, I have to get back to my thought. Um, yeah, so just along the lines of what Ms. Pat said, and also just to also reiterate again that I've never done this before. So most of my questions are really because I'm curious as to how this works and it's a learning process for me. Um, I'm wondering though, because I have had the same thoughts about the budget for the first IFB, which is already live. So if we come to the point where it's closed and we're reviewing, and we have bids, like we're, are we, we're bound by the lowest bid. So even if our lowest bid is 70K, are we bound to accept that bid? And then what would happen to the second portion if we use all of our money on the first portion before the second one even closes? Like, and so when I ask if somebody's keeping track of that, I know it's not necessarily our group's responsibility to keep track of the finances, but I think it's very important for us to at least know like um, updates, if we can get updates from the accountants, like you guys have used half of the allotted money, just be cautious because otherwise I don't understand how we can make decisions moving forward. Uh, Anthony? Yeah, so uh, to the first part, no. If, the, if, the, if even the lowest bid comes in and it's above our budget, we are certainly not obligated in any way to, to continue with the contract. We, we say, sorry, all the bids came in too high and we either do it again or we, we figure out another plan, but we've done it before where, where even the lowest bid has been too high and we just say, sorry. Now you used the term budget there. We could have more money in our encumbered account than the bid and still reject it as too high. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The, uh, okay. 
if it's higher than the number you deem prudent, prudent, then yes. And we haven't done such deeming. <laughs> and then can I just <laughs> Jennifer, add please. in that I can get updates from the accountant once we really start spending some money. Um, that's not a problem and bring that to the group. Or you guys can also um, vote in a treasurer who either keeps it from what I'm telling them or is in connection with the accountant or whatever, however that would work. And then the whole thing about it, the extension is then you go into the FY22 year and then you will hopefully have a fresh pot yeah, of money, money because isn't out of bid one, the first bid or the first phase has your recommendations in which you guys will recommend a dollar amount to move forward with for the next year. Right. Right? Yes. Okay, Alicia, and then Ms. Pat. Yes, so I think that was also my understanding of it, but I was just concerned about if there would be overlap. So like in the process of the bids opening and closing, if the, the, if the FY 20 year doesn't pass that, if that makes sense, would we be able to wait and push off the securing of a consultant until we can, but then we would need an even further extension to our work. Like what, like what would be the timeline that we would know that for sure we would have that available to us? Um, so whether you could push it off, whether you could hold the contract essentially until more money was available would depend on the nature of how this was appropriated. Um, if it were, if it was out of capital, then you could. If it isn't, then you probably can't. I'm, I'm not actually an accountant, so that's not a question I should answer definitively. Uh, the second question as to when you would know would be when the town council passes its budget, uh, which, which could be quite late. Uh, I, I mean, there'll be drafts of the budget, so you'll have an idea of what to expect. I don't, and I don't know exactly what that date is either, but potentially it could be down to the wire. Ms. Pat? Worst yes. case. So I also want um, us as the larger group to prepare ourselves in case we don't get, you know, consultant that meets our minimum requirement. And I'm a very optimistic woman, but for you know, a couple months now, I kind of knew this is coming. You know, because yeah. I'm a number woman. I talk in numbers and business. So let's pray that we get the right consulting firm that works out. The money really sucks. I'm sorry. It's just for what we're asking for. That's a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. So let me check, Anthony. Um, once the bids are open, there will be somebody who has the low number, but then we will need some time for our people to really examine the references carefully and decide whether they meet the minimum requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, would you then also come back to, or would someone come back to the CWSG and say, is this bid too high to accept uh, before we accept it, before it's accepted? Um, I guess that is something we, um, will, will want to work out. Um, typically, I don't know if I can even say typically because we don't, we don't usually do procurements out of committees like this. Normally it comes from, from a staff person. Uh, right. no, normal, normally the decision of what your ceiling is, is made ahead of time and we, we, we know going in what it would be. Um, my expectation is probably that just given the timeline involved, if we're opening on a Monday, it's gonna be a couple of days to check references that the time would just kind of work out that we'd be coming back to the full committee with what the evaluators have found. Um, but it would probably be good for the committee to decide that next week as to what kind of timeline they're expecting and who is authorized. Well, 
not who is authorized, but whatever the authorized amount is and, and when, I, when I can proceed to issue a contract. Okay. So am I right that we have a consensus on this subcommittee that we wanna ask the whole group to talk about this issue about um, how, what, do we have a maximum uh, for the bid in phase one? Uh, and what's the decision-making process around accepting that bid? Is that something we wanna to bring to the, to the whole group to talk about? Can you say that again? Can you frame that again? <clears throat> well, I guess what I thought I was hearing is that we need the whole committee, the whole working group okay. to talk about the possibility that the bids for phase one will be too high and also to talk about what is an acceptable level. How much of the money are we willing to spend on phase one? 70K. Well, I, I, that's not up to our subcommittee to decide. I, yeah, yeah. But that's I, I'm, proposing, I'm proposing that our subcommittee take that to the, to the whole group. Alicia? Um, I agree. But I'm also just wondering why we didn't is there a reason we didn't set a cap before we made it live? Like, is that, I don't know what nor, the normal process is, but Mr. Delaney mentioned something about usually there's, uh, there's a cap. So I'm just wondering why we didn't have one before. Uh, I didn't ask you to, and normally someone on staff tells me to tells me what it is. So I think it's just because of the novelty of the process, if I had to guess. So is that not something we yeah. would be able to decide then as a group? Would it be a different staff member that would make that decision for us? No, no, I think it's within your power. Okay. Yeah, there's no, there's no other staff person necessarily. I think what Mr. Delaney was trying to say was that typically it's just a, a staff person that he works with, with the bid to begin with. Right. And so there's not like, and it's so different for us because it's different for you guys because it's new, except for me, you know, maybe Pat and a little bit of Russ, but also it's new to us because we usually don't operate in the form of committees. So everything that we usually operate with staff, right. And so everything's just a little, a little bit different for everybody. Right. And so I'm very curious because I don't know about this process either. And so I'm finding this very fascinating. But <laughs> um, so we really think that the consultant is going to be up there in the $60,000, $70,000 range. I'm more, I'm more than that because. Because of the amount of time. Yes. And then, but we, so we don't necessarily want to do 70,000 because we still have the gift card program and ambassadors, right? Or do we just table that to FY22 and have it come out of the FY22 budget? I like I, that. That's brilliant. I like that. Yay! I, yay! I like that. <laughs> but I think that's something for the whole group to discuss. Yes, that's not, do, that's yeah. not can, really for us to decide here. No, but no, you can we propose, can propose that. We're, we're talking about proposal. Proposal. If I may. Uh, uh, Ms. Pat? Okay. I know we, we need to get into the uh, document as well. So when we're talking about the phase one, we should, I'm sure we all know that there are three projects, right? So when we take it back to the big group, when we try to decide the money limit, we should think about one, you know, quantity of time for each of the project when we're suggesting uh, uh, the cap amount for each project within phase one. I just want to throw that out. We're not talking about the whole, you know, it's the three different project within phase one, the cap. Got it? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there were th the, the bid was in three pieces. Yeah. Is in, is in three pieces. Yes. So yes, we'd have to have a discussion about how we prioritize those and et cetera.
can we look at this document for a bit? Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, does someone have, let's see, maybe I can screen share it. Thank see. you. <clears throat> Microsoft Word. Let's see, let me make this a little bigger. No, I can't change it. Can you can you see that document? Yes, very well. Yeah, very well. Okay. Um so I, I'm, I'll just say, as I worked on this, I thought, you know, we, we're talking about a consultant, but what we really are looking for is a researcher, investigator, report writer, um, and maybe a little bit somebody who will work with the police department to find out. Um, but my general sense is that there are a bunch of recommendations out there nationally from established reports and from defund. And then there's the police department policies and procedures, and we really need to know. I mean, I think there are some places where our police department has already implemented many of the recommendations in terms of their written policies, not necessarily in terms of their practice. Um, but this first section was really, you know, how do we get at policies, procedures, and practices? What, what's recommended and what's our, what are our folks doing and how do we, how could we change it? That was, that's my summary description of 1A. Um, I, like, I like all the additions that Alicia made here. Um, but let's, let's talk about 1A, one through six. I mean, is, we can go line, <coughs> line by line if you want, but is there anything in that first section that we wanna change? Anthony? So I have a question as someone who does not know the literature, so maybe this is an easy one. But parts in A, parts one and three, between them reference three different sets of best practices. Um, and again, not knowing the literature, are they, is there overlap there? Uh, are we asking people to, are we asking for a redundant set of checks, or do they do they do the three sets of best practices address different areas, and they don't really overlap? Uh, I'm hardly a scholar of this, but from my quick examination, the two referenced in in number one, I think, are fairly similar, but not necessarily identical. Uh -huh. uh, and one's 2015, one's 2019. Um, I think the recommended practices from the Movement for Black Lives and other defund police recommendations will differ <coughs> significantly, um, and, but that we need to look at both. So perhaps, um, do you want to put in like, 2019 then in number three, somewhere? Um, you know, I'm not sure that there's a definitive source or document. Um, I think, I mean, my, there's a lot of stuff on the Movement for Black Lives website. Um, and I would think they would use the most up-to-date date. But that that would be a... There may, there may be other written reports for Movement for Black Lives. 
I mean, so, I, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to keep interacting with this person and can, can tell them, you know, the details of what we want, but do you have a recommendation, Ms. Pat? I'm thinking is that a, like, I will confess that I, I didn't have time to fully like read it very well. I kind of like read it, did a quick read. So Thank you for putting this together and Alicia for editing. Does this document co you know, incorporate, uh, covers the original one that the town put out for us to work on? Is my question. Is that an overlap? Is it? I, in my mind, this covers everything that was there and replaces it. You know, the original one, you know, I think Mr. Bockelman and maybe even what I worked on was, you know, what are the recommendations? And then I realized, you know, we really need the consultant to look at how do the recommendations fit with what's already in place and, and help us figure out what's missing. Otherwise, we're going to have a big job to do after the consultant is done. But we could go through this and then go see we we'll go back to one of the other documents, see if there's anything missing. Okay. But I, I want to give you, I want to give you time to read here, Miss Pat, if there's, yeah. if you want to look at it as we go. Okay. Anthony? Um, not, not that we need to do it now, but um, in the second part four, include attention to data collection and public sharing of data. I think it might be worth expounding on that. Um, exactly what you're looking for. Attention to data collection. Um, it, seems, it seems a little unclear to me. Okay. Um... about uh, analyze current APD, oops, data collection and make data collection and sharing of data. and make recommendations for um, clarity and transparency. Well, for changes where deemed necessary. Does that do it? That, that's great. I like that. Alicia? Um, can we add something about analyzing the data through a racial equity lens? What number is that? Or the it's same not, number? No, it's not any number. Can we just add it to four? Yeah. 
That's what I meant, sorry. Does that do it? This year, sharing of data with the public. I mean, hopefully, our, if we get our consultant for phase one, they will have already done the analysis of the data for racial equity. Um, and what I had in mind here was more what data is being collected and how's it being shared? And what do we want them to be collecting different, different information or additional information? And what are the recommended for sharing it? Hopefully the analysis of the racial disproportionalities in the data will, I mean, that, that's in bid, our first bid. But I, I still like putting racial equity in here. All right, anything, Alicia? Um, yeah, sorry. So I agree with what you said, but I think it was, it's more about not like the data itself, but the process of the, the collecting of the data. Yes. I, that, yeah. Data collection methods or Process. processes. Yeah. Let's make this including. Does that work? Yeah, I think that's um, better, thank you. Yeah, no, I like, yeah, it really is the process that we're looking at here, I agree. All right, anything else in this first section? I'm sorry, you know, um, the way I think, I wish I had enough time when I got the document to really compare with what we have originally, but it's okay, I'll go along. It's fine. Well, if there's, if we approve this tonight and you find something missing, uh, we can put it back in, add it or put it, put yeah. it in when we get to, yeah. the, to the whole group. Yeah. Alicia? Um, yeah, sorry. Can we just also add here in number six, um, include information about best practices for hiring, hiring, retaining, and supporting a racially diverse police force? Retaining also means supporting, right? Well, you can keep them there at the job for like uh, financial reasons, but I think there support. needs to be an emphasis on the support, like, you know, whatever type of space needs to be supported for a racially diverse police force, which we don't currently have. Mm -hmm. So it may include some more changes. Yeah, I like that. Are we ready for B? Yes. Okay, this, this is one that came right out of the, the ideas anyway, came right out of the earlier version. It was sort of like, where, where is the contract gonna get in our way when we wanna make changes, if at all? And then the same question with regard to state law. Ms. Pat? So the, the, our state legislature um, passed the police reform, right? Are we going to ask um, when we do the IFP, are we going to ask them to review the state uh, new reform, police reform? 
because when I saw the contracts and legislation. We could just put right in here, including the newly the recent recent yeah massachusetts yep police reform yeah legislation yeah yep good are we ready for c yes Okay, before we talk to about C, I need to do something here and I will need to do it again in the uh, larger group. Um, I need to disclose a potential conflict of interest uh, in that I have done anti-racism training in the past. Okay. Um, and at one point was asked by a uh, trainer of color if I would be part of a team uh, to train the Amherst Police Department. It ended up that didn't happen. Um, and I do not, in, it's not my primary source of income. It's not something I do a lot. Uh, and it's not, I do not intend to bid in the future for a contract to train the Amherst Police Department. But I, uh, so I talked to the town manager about this and he had me contact the state uh, ethics, conflict of interest people. Um, they came back, they told me that uh, given the situation, the town manager had the uh, authority to say that there was not a conflict for me to participate on the panel where we're talking about training. Um, and it's not that I would ever apply to be the trainer for the police department. But if some trainers of color, you know, look like the best trainers for Amherst and they wanted me to be part of a team so that they had a white man uh, on the team, I wanted to make it so it was possible to do that. Um, so this is full disclosure. Uh, the town manager has said he doesn't believe there's any problem as long as I make that clear to everybody. Anthony. Um, just to clarify, the town manager said it would be okay for you to take a paid position with an outside group to train the Amherst Police Department? I think what he said was there was, well, I'd have to go back and get the exact wording. Okay. Uh, but he did not believe there was a conflict in my participating on this panel. Uh, there, definitely, or, there definitely isn't a conflict with you participating in the panel. I just, I would have reservations about my question. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, I and have no, yeah. And as I say, it's not my intention. It's not like I'm planning to beef up the training schedule and then so I can get a job. You know, I got, <laughs> I have plenty to do without that. Uh, but I wanted to be upfront about that, that I have, I have made money doing that in the past. Thank so you for, that's thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, so this next section, um, I mean, it seems like we're going to continue to have a police department. Uh, no matter how many things we move to our alternative service providers. Um, and it really matters whether they come on with uh, a whole lot of racism or whether they begin to understand what police practice that was safe and respectful for BIPOC looked like. Um, and while there's research that says the training doesn't uh, shift uh, the level of police violence. Um, I think that's quite true. If you just if you just train people, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. But if you train them and then supervise them uh, and set goals and currently re constantly review it, um, we can develop greater racial awareness. Um, so. Whether we decide to do this or not is, is another whole thing, but I think um, we want a less racist police department. Uh, and it's some combination of training and supervision and consequences and accountability that has a shot at giving it to us. And so it's, it's, that's my view anyway.
Mr. Delaney has his hands up. Yes, Anthony, sorry. So uh, on part C, I am imagining a bidder would have the question, which is how would the successful vendor go about finding out about uh, the current training, levels of supervision, et cetera, et cetera. Is there a process, an information pipeline, a liaison with the APD that is already set up? Um, or is that being worked on? Yeah, the town, uh, we have already gotten some information from the police department about their training. There are some things that are required by the state. Uh, the town manager wrote in his draft of the, the original combined bid for everything that the consultant would work with the APD or be a liaison between the APD and the community safety working group with regard to any number of things. Um, so I think the, it's not like we know who to talk to. Yeah, I mean, it's so far it's the chief. Yeah. Uh, and whether the chief delegates that, you know, but I mean, as far as I can tell what's happening is the town manager is telling the chief, you need to answer these questions and the chief yeah. is doing it and how much he delegates it to other people, I don't know, but it comes back from, from Scott Livingstone. Miss hmm. Pat. So, um, Mr. Ross, you've known me for a very long, long time, you know, um, you are one of uh, my kids' um, favorite principles. So, and this, this, this will not come as a surprise to you. I'm not in, to be honest with you, number C is my least um, interest in the whole document. And I say that because of my experience with the school system that have all this, um, equity, whatever, diversity, train, everything, and yet kids of color continue to lag behind academically. Discipline mm -hmm. continues to be uh, unequal, even with all the training, and even without uh, literature on uh, police uh, training and police don't help. I'm using the one, you know, through the school system that no amount of training will make it any difference. The issue here we're talking about is power structure. The police have incredible amount of power as we all know. And so training is not going to help, but I guess we want to include it in, um, in, the, uh, in this document and the, the committee CSWG, you know, the majority wins, goes, but I'm not very much interested in that. Another thing I forgot to mention when we were discussing about uh, budget money and everything, I'm hearing from community, uh, from residents that anything that has to do with uh, police itself should come from police budget and not, not, and not mm -hmm. to call it racial equity work. It should come solely from police budget. So I will hope that we recommend that as you know, part of our meeting today that this particular phase two, all the funding should come from police budget. Thank you. Alicia. Um, just to go off of what Ms. Pat said, I'm wondering then if it would be possible to investigate or inquire about the funding left in the frozen police positions and see if there would be a way to apply that money to this research. I, I don't know. I, I think that's, I mean, I think we could, I mean, my hope is the town manager would apply some of that money to, you know, this whole bid. Um, and, um, Ms. Pat, let me say, I, I certainly agree with you about power. And part of my hope is that if we get a good citizen oversight process, we can shift some power to the community away from the police. And it will require the police to have supervision, accountability, and consequences 
I mean, that's why those words are in there. Okay. Uh, and that that uh, is, is key to changing behavior. So I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm sold. And I, I agreed. <laughs> I agree that our <laughs> I agree that our report could call for any training to come out of the police budget, but we're not writing our final report here. We're just writing a, a bid to get somebody to get us some information. But I told I will support that being in the final report. Yeah. So okay, good, so we, good. Okay. Are we ready for D? Yes. Okay. And I, this is my first look at Alicia's. Can I, <clears throat> okay, if I put a hyphen in anti-racist? Yep. Um, Alicia, I like the first two. I'm not sure what it means. It's continuance as an equitable group. I just want to make sure that like over time, if we're not a longstanding group and we don't have control over the duration of the entire process, that it doesn't turn into something that we didn't intend it to be. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear that I wanted it to remain that way and for things not to, to change under the direction of other white people in power or, or however it may yeah. happen if we're uh -huh. not. But not our... Ms. Pat? Yeah, so the oversight uh, group wouldn't be us necessarily, correct? That's what I'm thinking, right? Right, yeah. Not, not unless not unless we all applied to be appointed. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> I I agree with um, what Alicia is saying. Like over time, to make sure that there is still representation of BIPOC membership. Is that is that what you you mean? Yeah, essentially. Okay. That it doesn't like over time people phase out and then new people phase in and then now the intention of the entire thing is completely different than what we can we created it with the intentions to be yeah that that's my worst nightmare it, it has exactly. run through my brain many many times many many times yes yeah well i'm i'm certainly in agreement about the idea i'm not sure these words quite do it okay yeah i'm not opposed to rewording it i just <clears throat> thought that's just a thought that came up there Mm. Uh, representation instead of continuous, maybe ongoing um, BIPOC representation. <clears throat> Um, I don't know, does that, it's an awful lot of words, Why? but I, Equity, okay. Ms. Marston has her hands up. Ms. Mo yes, Jennifer. Um, so I don't know if this would be the recommendation itself, but it should be noted, like there was a specific target of, well, basically Paul was like, the three quarters of the group has to be BIPOC. Yeah. So I don't know if that would be in this or if that would be like more of the recommendation coming from the consultant but that's something to consider yeah. that you can yeah, do maybe. in that way you don't have so that it's just written in the bylaws of or the the charge of the group so that that structure doesn't change yeah, yeah. like what we have right and, now yeah yeah 
And, yeah. and my feeling is that regardless of what the consultant recommends or says, we're going to insist that that be part of the charter. That's right. <laughs> of yeah. the citizen oversight group. So I think, I, think, I like that. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I'll, let me, let's see, Mr. Delaney, you may need to cover your ears for this, but uh, <laughs> let me, I will say confidentially to this group that I think our current police chief, um, you know, I think he's well-intentioned, but I also think that he has figured out how to often say the right thing and even write the right policy but not necessarily figured out how to get his uh, police officers to actually behave uh, in the way that's described in the policy. Um, and that's part of why I'm, and I think he is likely to back the creation of a citizen oversight group and then try to make sure it has no power. Um, and that, that may be unfair, but that's what I wanna be prepared for. And that's why I'm specifically asking these questions about how are they sometimes limited and how can they be, those limitations be avoided? Can and I just- Forgive me if, forgive me if I'm too cynical. No, no you're no. not, I, I, I'm with you, I'm with you. I but, thought about that too. Can I just say that somewhere in that section, was it C, um, Pat, that you, Ms. Pat, that you said you didn't really care about the training section? So it's not so much about training, though. It's like, how do you get them to, how do you get the police officers to look through the lens of, for equity, right? Yeah. So that is the piece that we need. It's, yeah. and if, if that can come through yeah. some training, but not all the training, right? Yeah. So it's just basically, how do we get them to see through the lens of DE? Or... That's right. Yep. 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 Well said. Yes. And I don't know where to put that or how that happens, but. Well, that a good consultant will help us with that. And if he doesn't, we'll maybe Dr. Love can help us with that some and we'll, but I think it has to be in our final report. All right, anything else here about citizen oversight? Scroll up, I'm not actually sure what all this. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then Anthony. Uh, Roman numeral three seems kind of unusual to me. Um, there's a really well-defined set of questions and tasks and goals in, in Roman numeral one, but then Roman numeral three is about playing timekeeper. And it seems like a strange fit to me. Well, again, I was working from something that I thought. I guess just the first sentence, the second sentence, the sentence is fine, but the. All right, well, maybe I can go back to the town manager's words here. Let's see, I think the earlier version was to facilitate the report writing process, the consultant will develop a plan, including a timetable for action to assist the working group with meeting its goal of issuing a report by the dates above. Um, do we like that language better? Is there, is there a report? coming out of, of this version? Because there's IFB number one has a report as its end product. Is there one here as well? I guess there is. Yes. Before. Yeah. Yes, it's in the bottom of four. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see.
Mm, Alicia has her hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Alicia. Yep, I'm just wondering, or as clarification to this <clears throat> section, because beneath we have like the timelines to be developed with the town manager and the CSWG. So are we referencing two different timelines or would we be also developing that timeline with the consultants? Well, I mean, part of what I imagine is the consultant is going to come up with a whole bunch of information and get it to us and say, you know, here are a couple of key decision points. If you want me to write a report, I need to know by this date which direction you're going on this issue and by this date which direction you're going on that issue. That, that was the way I was thinking about it. But um, um, But maybe we just leave that out. That's okay with me. I think the way that you said it the second time makes I mean, a lot more sense to me than how it was written before. Can you give it back to me so, <laughs> so I can write it? <laughs> um, undo, undo, undo. <laughs> no, I don't think I ever had it written though, did I? No, you said it out um, loud. <laughs> um, Um, so, and also Russ, can I just ask, it starts at Roman numeral two. Are you missing something or did you just get misnumbered? Roman or numeral one is all the way up. No, no, Roman numeral oh, one is all the way at the top. Okay. So did I say one? Okay. Got it. Thank you. It looks like a one, but it's actually an I. <laughs> um, Does that come close, Alicia? Um, yes, but maybe for timely correspondence as it relates to the development of recommendations, because I don't know, will they be creating the timetable for the completion of the report or will that be what we create with the town manager and ourselves? We'll tell them we need the deadline by this date and then they, they will be trying to config, figure out a schedule for them to correspond with us in regards to the recommendations for the final report. Okay, can you suggest, I'm, I'm I, I'm in agreement. Can you suggest some language? Um, yeah, it was just um, to develop a timetable for timely correspondence in regards to the development of recommendations for inclusion instead of completion, because I don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they would be coming up with the timeline for when the report should be completed. I think they would just be coming up with the timeline as to when they would need to know from us which way we're leaning on certain issues in order to inform how they write their report. Can I say communication instead of correspondence? Yeah, I think that's fine. Does that do it as is? I think that works better for me, Mr. Delaney. I'm wondering if that is more clear than what we had before, because that was the initial question. Uh, I, I had my hand up and then I took it down because I'm still kind of mulling it over. Um, I, 
I, I think my general recommendation is that this group or the committee should develop as much of a timetable beforehand and, and set it for the vendor. Um, going in, hiring someone and going into the relationship without without a, a timetable, even a, even a timetable for communication, uh, I think would be perilous. So I would urge, I, I would urge you to to have uh, target dates, you know, they, they may slip, they, they can, but, um, you know, analysis of procedures done by certain date, rec uh, recommendations for best practices done by another date, and uh, attending biweekly meetings for that period, some, something, whatever, whatever it is, I, I would urge you to have it let set down. All right. Can, can we just delete the highlighted sentence? Okay, let, let's delete that. Um, I don't think we can talk about a time frame here. We don't know whether we need this all done by mid-June or whether we're going into the fall. So I don't, I don't see how we can set dates until we get some of that worked out with the whole group and the town manager. Oh, I wasn't suggesting you set it tonight. No. Yeah, yeah. Alicia? Um, yeah, so then I, my question would just be then, would we need to request an extension from the town council before we were able to finalize this document? That's a good question. I don't know. I think that's a town manager question. Ms. Pat? So um, when I first saw the original document. And then when I volunteered to be in the subcommittee and our two charges, the first one recommending alternative uh, public safety services, just in my head, I said, we need to split this project. So um, into phase one and phase two. My understanding is that the phase two will not impact the budget this fiscal year. The, the phase one, the alternative services, whatever we recommend, and if the town council approves them, it will need funding. So what I'm trying to say is that we should go ahead and, you know, do uh, complete the phase two uh, IFB, and then still request for extension. And if town council approves it, then we can plug in the dates. I don't think we should wait, you know, for them to, you know, for us to put this on hold to get approval from town council. Does that make sense? Alicia? Uh, yes, so I think that makes perfect sense and I would agree, but then my follow up question would just be is that something we are allowed to do, can we put it out like this and then put the dates in after. Oh, got gotcha. you. Yeah, but that's what that's exactly what I, I'm thinking too. Yeah, I, I think we can put this out to the community safety working group. Uh, and uh, maybe Jennifer can alert the town manager to our recommendations about money and time and the need for it, that we're going to need to have a conversation with the whole group and the town manager about the time frames. Um, I don't I don't think we need to figure that out tonight. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pat? Can we see the, the one that uh, Mr. Delaney put together? The document that you put together? We're done with this, correct? Yes. Are we done with this one? Okay. I think we're done with this part of it. I'm going to, let me make sure I get it saved. I'm going to put it. The, the version, the version that I created was just Mr. Vernon Jones's text plugged, okay. in, plugged, plugged into our boilerplate. Uh, oh, that's so, what I did too. Oh, I did the same thing. Was, and then I got yours and it was essentially the same. Okay. So, okay. um, I don't think it would profit us too much to look at what I did because 
it doesn't have any of the revisions or it doesn't it, it was only a format change it didn't change any text okay okay so we're keeping the same uh, minimum requirements right that's what yeah so is somebody going to plug this into the boilerplate now i guess that's what i'm trying to ask yes My, Anthony? Uh, so what i would offer slash suggest is that uh you send me the final version the whatever the final version of this text is at the end of the night okay and i'll i'll plug it in to the ifb and turn it back to you guys sometime tomorrow thank you okay that's great and that sounds good if you good. can just any place we need a date if you can just put date in capital right. letters yeah, yeah. That, but we really need the dialogue with the town manager to set the dates, I think. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ross and Alicia for, for the work. Oh, thank, thank everybody. This is, it's, 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 it's really a team effort. I like this team. I do too. Uh, yeah. can, we, can we go back and talk about a couple of things with regard to the bid that's currently out? Anthony. Uh, so, uh, I have received some early feedback from two people on that. Uh, whenever you, I don't know what your plan for the evening is, but whenever you'd like to me to start talking about that. Well, let, is it okay with everybody if we talk now about the bid that's currently out? I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay with that. Are we are we finished looking at this one? Like, is the next following step just to place it into the template, or will we revisit this after we start talking about it? Um, I think the next step is to put this in the template and indicate where we need dates, and then we'll take it to the whole group. Okay. The whole group yeah, may want to make changes, that. and we need to talk about the dates together. Yeah. So with regard to the first bid, I thought that we made a decision when we were meeting that we were going to actually, remember we had a long discussion about the fact that there wasn't enough time before April 1st to do all of the community outreach that we wanted to do. And Mr. Bachelman then suggested maybe there should be two separate bids and have the community outreach piece go longer than the uh, alternative services. And I thought we had agreed that that was what was gonna happen. Um, Ms. Moyston went back and looked at the, the, the uh, tape or transcript of the meeting and we never actually took a vote. Um, but at any rate, that's not what happened. What we now have out is, is one bid that has three op three parts to it, um, but it also has some problems with the dates. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I totally missed that we were going to pull it with that we were going to have different due dates. I do not. Rec yeah. Okay, Alicia. Um, I also just had a question about the first bid. Um, so we, we talked about splitting it in sections and then the fact that we were going to be requesting people to submit their bid on each section, but it says that bidders can bid on any or all of the sections. And But I thought that we weren't allowed to say that because we would want to indicate in the beginning if we wanted one bidder to do all of these sections. So I was also just a little bit confused about that language because I thought that our intention in splitting it up was so that we didn't have one consultant doing all of the sections. Um, Anthony? So, so the way it's currently worded where it says someone can bid on any or all would mean that if someone bid on all three and were qualified for all three and were the lowest bid on all three, then yes, if that happened, we would have just one consultant. Um, I can't, I can't really envision a mechanism for prohibiting that just for the the idea that we would want to to split it to split it up I mean we're considering all three separately but if someone has the best proposal for all three then then they'll get it okay yeah no I'm not opposed to it I just was unclear because I thought that we weren't allowed to do that like I thought that was the case so 
No, Thank where you it's, it's, no, it's, to, no it's, it's totally fine. So if, let's suppose somebody bids only on part one and somebody else bids on all three, uh, the one who bids on all three has the lowest bid for the, doing the total job, but that their bid for part one is higher than the person who bid only on part one. Can we take the, the low bid for part one and then? Yes. Then the one, take the part of the one that, if they're the low bid on the other pieces, take the other two pieces. Uh, yes, we're, we're considering an award for A, lowest price, an award for B, and award for C. Uh, the, the total price is on the form, but it, it doesn't really come into the award decision where we're looking at A and B and C separately. Okay. Well, I do think we have a problem because the top of the bid document says that the contract will end April 1st. And further down in the document, it has uh, due dates that are uh, well into April. So that's a problem regardless. Okay. Um, Anthony? Uh, I'm sorry. I am having technical issues. Jen, are you able to, I just got kicked out of my work PC. Are, are you able to get into town hall right now? Are you in, are you, in, are you using log me in? You're muted. I can't use log me in for zoom meetings because it ends up playing out on the yeah. computer at work. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't I'm have not... the camera there. Yeah, okay. Are, no, are you not... looking for the bid? Yeah, I was hoping to look at the bid, but I can't get into my work computer right now. So uh, Russ, do you have it? I'll, I I'll think Russ? so. I think I'll, so. No, it, I'll just pretend I'm, it's okay. I'll just pretend I'm a bidder and I'll we'll go into the public portal. Oh, you know what? Actually, I can get it. I know how I can do this. No, I have it here. Here. Okay. Uh, can you see this? Yes, thank you. Yep. Okay, so it's here. It is the term of this agreement shall be until it. April 1st. Look in Isaiah's closet. Yeah. Do, you, do you see where I'm pointing? Yes, oh. I do. Yes, I do. Sorry, I was talking to my son. And then, and, and then we have later dates down further. Yeah. Yeah, we've got final report April 30th. Okay. So that's one issue, but the other issue is that um, well, I don't know. Maybe is is April thirtieth late enough for the uh, the community outreach piece? I mean, this looks like Part B, final plan, April second. Um. That's the, that's the alternative services part, right? Yeah. So I think that final, I don't know why it says plan there. I would think that there was also a report for part B. But let me let me ask the subcommittee members, do we think we can live with the dates that are here is part B is a final plan and report on April 2nd, and then outreach the final report April 30th. 
Alicia? I can't specifically recall how our meeting went, but I thought that we, the 30th was the last date that we could push it out to because something needed to happen in the beginning of May. I, I can't really quite remember. Was there a reason we chose that date in the first place? So I think that the, the earlier date is a result of trying to get stuff in for the budget on time, right? And then the second one was still so that Paul can get a report to the um, to the council, I think, right? Because right. the the earlier one has is because of the budget. We don't want to wait to the last day before the budget is due. Right, and the it was his latest date for the budget was May one, right? No, he he submits his budget for May first. Yeah, so and Deborah was like, we can't wait to so I maybe I have it mixed. So the reason why the April 9th deadline or the 23rd one was no for part B is for to 2021, right? Yeah, that I was to part, make the budget. Part was B was alternative budget. services for the budget, and we yes. went back and forth between April 2nd and April 9th, and I don't know whether we ever really decided. Um, well, it was April 9th, 9th I yeah. believe. Yeah, April 9th. Yeah, I thought that, I thought have, this here, this was going to be April 9th. Yeah. No, 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 we can't change anything right now. You can't, I mean, yeah, we will. No, 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 I was just highlighting it. Oh, okay. Um, and then Anthony, I can um, show you the meeting or send you the meeting if you need like a confirmation on then that was what the decision was made. I mean, I mean, we had a lot of dates going back and forth that meeting. Yeah. yeah. What, I, what I have here is where the document was at the end of the night. So um, I, I don't need to go back to the meeting. I'll, I'll change it to whatever the We'll issue, I'll issue an addendum tomorrow with whatever the correct date is. I'll change the date in the purchase description to be May 1 or whatever date uh, mutually agreed upon. I will change the Part B final plan to May, to April 9th. Any other, any other changes? Well, can we make Part B <laughs> final plan and report? Final, from final plan to final report. So, so you're amending, you're going to be amending the, the bid. IFP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the April 9th, I thought is when uh, CSWG is going to be, uh, be presenting to town council for uh, draft recommendations of alternative public service. service. I, I thought that's what is happening that day. I think uh, Deborah has suggested that date. It might be the reason why we have the April 2nd. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, if, if you're presenting on April 9th, then you'd need yeah. the, plan, the report. That's, I, that, that's my recollection. Yeah, I, I think let's, let's leave part B at April 2nd. Okay. And give us some time to work with whatever they produce. But the question is, how long do we want the outreach to go on? You want my opinion? I'm, I'm not speaking for anyone. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Pat. The way I look at this, and I'm just praying that we get a robust um, response, that doing outreach in our community with different groups that we have, it's not even enough time. You know, perhaps it might be a pilot, like pick some larger focus group and then continue next year or something like that. There's no way, you know, whoever gets this uh, contract will be able to uh, hit all the groups we need to reach in our community. It's practically impossible. 
So I just, yeah. Alicia? Um, I agree with Miss Pat. Um, and I don't know if this is something like beyond the IFB that we could also put into our recommendations, but I think that community outreach needs to be outgoing because even once we're finished with our work and we implement these changes, we still want feedback from the community to know yes. if it's even working. So I mm -hmm. think the community outreach aspect also needs to be ongoing because we can't really evaluate our work without the feedback of the community. I like that. I think we could write ongoing community outreach into the job description of the citizen oversight panel. But that still leaves the question of how long do we want this consultant to pursue outreach? And I don't know whether it makes it more doable to make it a later date or whether we end up paying more money if we want them to keep going. <laughs> Ms. Bad? Perhaps we may want uh, whoever gets this contract or when we're doing the amendment to this document to emphasize to hit BIPOC community first in their outreach. I don't think we can hit everybody. We can't hit everybody. I, we cannot. I think we... So that would be a pilot to do that. And then maybe next time, you know, uh, maybe next time, it, then it could be like, Plow employees and you know yeah. other subgroups too. They, well, and if yeah. if the consultant trains the ambassadors, the ambassadors could continue. Uh, but it beyond take, yeah, but it yeah, 30th. it takes time to train ambassadors. That's the thing. It takes time to train ambassadors who go in, you know, and do that and collect the data that they're looking for. All right, so are we thinking we should just leave all of these dates and just change that one at the very beginning, Alicia? Um, yeah, I think for, for what we can do right now, it, it's limited, but I think we should just start with this and, and we know we're going to need ongoing uh, community outreach. So I, th I think we can figure that out in some other aspect of everything. Yeah, okay. So Anthony, what was the other feedback you got about the, the IFB? So uh, I got, uh, I received one email from a national consulting outfit that saw it and uh, essentially their first question is, is the timeline in the IFB accurate? And when I said it was, they had some feedback uh, on that. I forwarded that to Mr. Bockelman and Ms. Moyston. Did that, uh, did that, I assume that didn't, that hasn't been sent to the committee yet. Okay, let me pull that up. No, I didn't have, I was waiting for yeah. the directive to. Yeah. Um, so I would certainly let the working group know that we cannot in good faith respond to this IFB despite our strong interest in qualifications. The work that is described in the IFB will, in our estimation, require a minimum of six months and possibly a year. With all due respect to the working group and the council, I believe they have set unrealistic expectations for this work and are unlikely to get the kinds of proposals or the kinds of bidders they are hoping to receive. By way of reference, both the clients with whom we are currently working on this type of work are several months in. Uh, Larry Schooler, Director, Senior, Director, Senior Facilitator, Kearns and West. <clears throat> that's, that's only one person's opinion and it's uh, one day after the bid went live, but. And it was national as well, right? So we were looking... they're, they're, a, they're a pretty sizable outfit. Um, he, said, he said he's worked with, was it Salt Lake City? Salt Lake City. So. Ms. Bad and then Alicia. You know, if I had said this like six weeks ago, they would say, what is this middle-aged African woman talking about? You know? So no surprise there. I would be really, I'm, I'm really curious and I'm a very positive woman. I'm repeating myself. I would be curious to see what we get. Honestly, I think this subcommittee, we should try to really uh, 
uh, guide the larger group what is realistic. What I'm proposing is, since this is already out, let us pick few groups in our community as a pilot uh, program to work on, on the community engagement rather than being broad, rather than going out to all the groups. That's impossible. If you want to do Hispanic group, you know, African-American group, a, you, know, a, you know, within a, Asian, the more population we have here, um, but not everybody, we can't catch everybody. Let's pick like four different groups or something like that. And it's just number I'm throwing out. That is more realistic and have the ambassadors go out there. Another issue is translation as well. It looks like the town doesn't want to pay for translation. They want the money to come out of the same budget. We're not being realistic with this project. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you guys, it's, it's, it's not doable. The time frame is just ridiculous. We can't do it. They can't, yeah. Does that make sense to people? Alicia? Uh, yeah, so I just wanna say that I, I completely agree with Mrs. Pat. Um, and I've been feeling very concerned about the reality of what we're asking people to do in the time frame in which we are asking them to do it was my first concern. But like now tonight, I also am concerned with the budget to be completely honest. So I'm concerned with all of these things now. Um, and I actually, I did bring it up at our last group meeting, my, my deep concern with the timeline that we have for the IFB that's already live. Um, and I recall the feedback that I got from the group was that we're more concerned with meeting the timeline because we want our recommendations to be taken seriously and to be able to inform the budget process of the next fiscal year. And we don't want our recommendations to be not considered because we don't meet a certain timeline. And so I think if we're gonna be realistically thinking about that and looking at this, like, yes, the, the bid's already out. I, it's, it's live, we're gonna see what we get back, if we get anything back and we'll evaluate then, but I think we should be prepared for the reality that we might not get any bids at all. And that that's going to push us back even further because then if we amend the document or put out another thing, that's, we have to go through this entire process again. And so, I, I just want us to be realistic or maybe come up with a plan B as a group for if we aren't able to retain a consultant to do the work that we need to do in a reasonable amount of time, because we also don't want to waste the time that we have trying to figure out how we can retain a consultant. So I don't know where to start really with that, but I think it's looking a lot more likely. And I, I had kind of feared this before because this is a huge ask and I, and I think this absolutely needs to be documented in our recommendations that, that this process, like I know this is the first time we're doing it, but it was very flawed. Um, and in order for us to make appropriate recommendations, we would have needed more time for this process itself, let alone the process of actually getting to the process of making the recommendations. So I, I don't really know what to do with that, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. Jennifer? Um, so I think that was part of the reason why I sent out that email was to get people's minds thinking because I didn't want to come out and say, because, you know, sometimes I think Anthony has said that the bids come out very close to the end, like people start submitting them very close to the end, to the deadline of them. And so th that could be the case. Um, but I just think that as a group, we need to just, and also I think even if, we do have somebody, but we start thinking about what, or you guys do have someone and you start thinking about what you guys want to do. It'll make the scope of the work more targeted, if that makes sense, for A and B. And so it's just, mm -hmm. I just think that all the eggs are in one basket and we, because we don't have, wouldn't have enough time to to go out and rebid. So it's either that you have to ask for like a whole year or something or and and a, and a decent sized budget. And if you don't spend a lot of money out of this first pot, then you have that, you can see if you can get that. I don't know, Anthony, do you get to keep what you didn't spend or no? That depends on, that depends on the nature of the, of the, um, of the, of the way it was budgeted. Yeah. 
I, I, don't, I don't know. Actually, I spent like the first 15 minutes of this meeting trying to find the budget article in Munis and I couldn't, so. No, it's probably not there yet or it's in <laughs> town manager's budget. Yeah, it's in general. Ms. Pat? Okay, so I'm going to blow this out, okay? So basically, what I've been hearing in the community is when it comes to stuff that will benefit BIPOC, we're being nickel and dimed. Amherst community is well resourced. And so if this is really a priority for our government, our town government and everybody, this is the time to show it. We shouldn't be rushed to do this. And I'm going to repeat myself next week. That's what I'm hearing. People are like, huh, Pat, you're joining this group, good luck. You know, they just want to check, like we we'll tried, you know, George Floyd, you know, we want to make changes in Amherst. And then we just like, have you rushed everything? We're not, we'll, they won't, you know, get enough funding to do this. And they will say, we try to do this. That's how I'm feeling. That's how I'm feeling. And then I hope that our group will push back a little bit. We have to get this right. So we Jennifer have to- and, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Jennifer and then Alicia. So I um, have heard very similar. Yeah. And I will, and I've also said the bid is just crazy. But um, what I will say is that we're in a position where we can really put a lot of pressure on town council, whether it was town council's intentions or not to nickel and dime, we can just basically say they didn't really have an idea of the scope. Of the scope or or the how in depth this is the work is like they just you know what I mean so we're, yeah. I won't talk about their intentions or yeah. being purposeful they just didn't know and yeah. I think that what they were really looking for was just recommendations on how to move forward and then it just has like grown into something bigger yeah. and there's we also are in a position because everybody's up for re-election so those people who are wanting to be like it is the time to if we're gonna if you have to push back I'm not saying that you would but if you had to push back or if you had to apply some pressure now would be the time or because everybody's getting ready it's just a, it's all politics at the end of the day and so you have to treat it as such um so i think that you guys I, honestly i don't think that anything that you ask whether it's an extension or budget money i don't think that they would say no to you i just think that the council themselves just perhaps weren't aware of how in-depth this work really is yeah. alicia, that's the run. nice way to say that yeah alicia run 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 we're yeah, going to I'm put sorry. you for I'm candidacy just... yeah i'm sorry we want I, you to I, run also <laughs> I'm not ready yet, but I, I also just think that, yeah, so I agree with everything that Ms. Moisen and Ms. Pat said. Um, I have also received similar feedback from the community that, that we're being asked to do this work for a ridiculous amount of money, and I'm feeling very much the same way myself, to be completely honest, and I'm very optimistic. I want to make that clear, but I'm feeling slightly discouraged because Amherst is a very wealthy town and it sort of pains me to hear town officials talk about how we don't have it in our budget to do this. We don't have it in our budget to do that when we're talking about things that are gonna benefit the community that we're trying to benefit. And we already have poured generous amounts of money into the white affluent communities that don't really need it. So for yes. us to take tiny bits of that money and to invest it into a community that's suffering no, nope. it, it, I don't understand where the question is there. It, it kind of frustrates me, mm -hmm. um, especially with things like like translation services. Like I, I understand we're also a smaller town and it makes more sense for bigger cities to have translation services readily available at any minute, but that does not matter because that adds to why our community is not equitable. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're trying to have an equitable committee, uh, community, we need to address these things. And yeah. I think that that all ties into why the town council did not anticipate this work being so extensive because we have not put the attention into this community. Mm -hmm. And that's why this work is extensive. And, and I think it deserves the time and attention. Um, and another saying like, forgive me for being blunt, but a saying that I've come across a lot in my life and in my line of work is that 
rushing is is a product of white supremacy. Yeah. And, and meeting timelines is literally a product of white supremacy. We need to do this by this time because people of color do things with care and we take our time. And I think yep. this is exactly the kind of work that needs to be done with care and that we need to take the time to do it because we don't wanna rush recommendations that are gonna be so critical to people's livelihood. And so I think we need to find a creative way to get something in to meet the deadline that we have to meet because we are we are functioning in white supremacy right now but yeah. this is what we're trying to dis dismantle so to be able to also make that very clear to the town council that this is not how the process can continue to work if this is the community we want to serve exactly exactly we should do we should we should still do the recommendation for the april 9th i will really encourage our larger group to you know, submit our recommendation through Ms. Mo uh, Moistin and CC to uh, the town manager. We should still knew that, but in terms of the uh, IFP, AB, it should be a pilot project is what I'll push for. We can reach all the segment of our community for the community engagement to have a report done for us by a consultant. I don't care where they come from, whether it's national or local. Nobody can hit everybody by April. I think that's, that's our message in our next week meeting to push for pilot program and decide on the groups we want to focus on for, this, for, for the initial one will be my, will, will be my recommendation. Yeah. Uh, I'll say I'm in tremendous agreement with virtually everything you just said, including the white supremacy and timeline uh, situation. I don't know that I'm right about this, but my recollection is this 80,000 got set aside early on in the process of the council responding around um, uh, George Floyd's murder uh, before the community safety working group was ever set up. And I think when they set you know, put us in motion, they were like, oh, they can use that 80,000. It wasn't like anybody ever thought about appropriating money that was dedicated to, to our group. Um, and I, I'm all for pushing more time, more money, long range. And I want to make sure we don't miss a political opportunity that exists because we have these two police department positions on hold. Uh, and if we've got an opening this spring to get those converted to alternative services, uh, I don't want to miss that chance to get something set up and started, even if it's a pilot, even if we haven't done all the research that we want to do, uh, because if we can get that established and something in the, and a good chunk in the budget to expand it the next year, um, then we've really, then we can really make something happen. Jennifer? And, um, yeah, so I think behind the scenes there were talks about the group, but that piece doesn't really matter so much. Um, I just, what if we leave this bid open and do the same thing, right? Like we'll leave this one open and let it, or open and close or however you call that, right? So that closes, we don't accept any bids we go back to the, the part of the recommendation to the council is we need a lar much larger budget, A, because the consultant alone to do the work is at minimum seventy eighty thousand dollars $80,000 at minimum, right? And then for that's for one section of it, right? And then, so we're saying we need, I don't know, 250, whatever the, the dollar amount is, because then you have the ambassador program, the card program. If, if we can ever go back to in-person stuff, you guys would definitely need to go into the complexes and have things like barbecues and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so you just, you need money, right? And so that's the biggest piece of, of one of the recommendations is that you have a stable budget. Right, and then you take that and then you can kind of start over with this and the other section of it too. And then it, you can run it and say you have a year, right? So that people can get the work done and do it done thoroughly and or whatever amount of time the group decides that it would. But if we just table it all, 
until after we put in um, the budget. So I, I think that one of the first things we need to do is address the budget. I think we need a strong recommendation for, or you guys need to start. I'm so sorry. I'm just so into it. Yeah, um, yeah, we like it. We, we, like we it. know. We know you're part of us. Yeah, we know. We know that. Um, and I, I think that the two. I don't think I think that the two positions at the police station will stay open, but I think we need a strong recommendation on how to fill those two positions. And so we could say that three quarters of it goes to whatever social workers or whatever, however we want to do that. And then we have a quarter of it that's going to go to um, right. all the stuff that you guys are saying should come out of the police budget and not out of your budget, right? So then you can divide that up. Oh, I had one more really good thought, but I just, it just slipped the top of my, just slipped from my mind. Um, I just feel like we could, there's stuff that you guys could be doing now that's progressive and moving you guys forward. And my fear, there's so many ways to get trapped in local government. It's, and, and it's not necessarily like purposeful. There's, it's just, it's so complicated for like no reason sometimes. I know Anthony, you know what I'm talking about. It's like some things are just like unreasonably like complicated and it just, you're like, why? But that's just the way that it is for some reason, right? But we, you guys can can set a standard and set a goal and meet that and, and appease everything. I, I honestly don't think that anytime soon that you need to have a consultant for you guys to get those recommendations in. You guys need to send them to me. I can draft them out and so that we the duplicates we can get rid of. And then everybody breaks off in groups and works on those recommendations on how to get it done. Right, like, and then bam, it's done. And part of that recommendation is the whole thing with the consultant and the budgets. Yeah. If I may add, um, I also want us to be very clear that when we're talking about racial equity work budget, we're not talking about the phase two. The phase two should take care of itself from police budget. What we're asking for, I want us to be very, very clear that we're asking for phase one budget to be increased. I already know in my head how much I will throw out, but I'm just only, but only, I'm only one person from eight people, but I know what I have in my, in my brain, in my head that I think will make sense to do the three pro, uh, uh, project, but I can't. Yeah, and I, so I, I also just want to say that I don't know that the council necessarily, well, I do know, but I, to be neutral and fair, like that they always think about things through the lens of DEI, right? So to give an unrealistic date to them isn't necessarily, should be taken as, an, they just don't know, right? They don't look at things through that vision. They don't understand yeah. that. And I just feel like it's a good lesson for everybody. And it's a good opportunity for us to, to, to show like, you guys take, I don't know, six months to come up with one decision about one thing. How can we come up with a whole plan in less than nine months, right? Like it's, there's no, right? So they don't, they just don't understand. And so part of what it has to be is they have to be educated on why this takes so long, right? You can't just change people's lives and not ask them. That's just insane, right? Like you just, yeah. So anyways, I'm, I'm done. Thank you so much. Very helpful. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Alicia? Um, yes, thank you, Ms. Moisen. I really appreciate your comment. And I just wanted to say that also, though, I strongly agree with um, what Mr. Vernon Jones was speaking about before, and that I, I think, well, and I guess Ms. Moisten and Ms. Pat also said the same thing, that, that we still need to get our recommendations out regardless of the timeline. And so Yes, I, I like strongly agree with that. We don't want to miss, it's a, it's a huge political opportunity and we need to be on top of that. But I also think that there is a lot of value in our ability to present to the town council why this is problematic. And I think we also need to be on top of that and in a timely manner so that 
they can work on addressing these things as well because our timeline is because of their timeline. So if we need to let them know why our timeline doesn't work to inform their timeline moving forward in the future. So I, I think like, yeah, I mean, what Ms. Moisen said, this is a huge learning process for everybody. So I think though that it's our responsibility to make sure the town council understands this because they're, it's not really a learning process for them if we don't bring it to them. Yeah. yeah. So basically they need to double the budget of whatever we have right now to do the phase one or even more. Oof, I'm thinking more. Don't you yeah, think more? more? Yeah, like triple. I even, yeah. Yeah. But at least I mean, I don't know how I, I and, and then you just have to go up a hundred thousand just because, right? Because they're gonna say, Oh, well, no, we're not gonna if, if we want three thousand and we say we need five thousand, and then they come back and say we're not um, gonna do five thousand, yeah. but, but maybe we'll like do minimum. three thousand. <laughs> I don't know if it works like that, but yeah. that's yeah. Because it, yeah. it involves labor, it involves, and with the pandemic, it, it will make it more challenging. I guess what I'm not hearing tonight uh, as a consensus is, are people open to pilot projects? Because we don't want to set up any consulting firm or individual for failure. Are people feeling that somebody can realistically hit all the groups in this town in a few weeks? No, I, I don't think that was ever realistic. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure. I think we want to focus on some marginalized communities. I mean, mostly BIPOC, probably homeless as well. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's realistic for us to think about doing everybody even in the next year. I think that's a, oh, good. a longer okay. term project even than that. Okay. okay. Um, Anthony, if we, if the bid comes in too high, or if we don't get any bids, or we decide we don't want to spend that much on what's being bid, but we still feel we need some help, somebody to do some research, somebody to maybe just to train the ambassadors, can that be done by asking for three quotes? Uh, yes, uh, assuming you're going to spend under $50,000, yes, you can solicit three quotes. Oh, and um, can you solicit them? I mean, you know, can we go only to three uh, people of color to ask for for quotes? Uh, you can, yeah, you can solicit any three companies that you believe can do the work. Companies, individuals, what? Yeah. Three, three vendors. Okay, so if there are some particular tasks we feel we have to get done in order to have our recommendations ready, uh, we might, you know, we could ask on, only people we would like to have do it. So that goes um, to, I agree, that goes to Alicia's um, question, like do, we should have a, a plan B and this should be our plan B. If, you know, the bid comes back and we, you know, we didn't like it or it didn't work out, then perhaps can we negotiate and have some, you know, people, you know, to do that for us. I like that. I think that's a great idea, Mr. Ross. I like that. Alicia? Um, I also agree. I think that's a great idea. And I think though that that should be something we propose to the group, because I, I think my idea would be that our next group meeting, we'd also want to inform the rest of the group about the responses that we received to the bid. Um, as a prefix and then also state that as our suggestion that we came up as a subcommittee, but that we're presenting it to the group to see how they also feel about it. Um, because I think it might be important to establish that in the near future. Yeah. Anthony? Um, I don't want to cut off any other discussion, but there was a second email. I was gonna ask. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Uh, the second email was only asking questions. Okay. Um, first question, can you provide the estimated not to exceed budget amount for the period of performance? My suggestion would be that we decline to answer, which is totally within our, our purview. Okay. Um, second question, how many members make up the working group? I can answer that. How many total employees for the town? How many managers? I got those numbers from human resources today. Okay. Fourth question, is the town open, open to an alternative approach based on evidence-based best practices? And I asked them to clarify that question 
And they said, for example, our framework will still achieve the town's goal of ending structural racism and achieving racial equity and will be in alignment with the scope of work. In addition, we focus on establishing data-driven benchmarks by conducting a racial equity audit assessment of all departments and focusing on engaging and developing department leaders with our toolkit. Um, my suggested answer would be something like, uh, the town is open to, uh, of the, uh, to, the vent to a vendor's approach, but is not uh, able to make any alterations to the scope of work as laid out. Uh, something, something like that. Uh, we would want to be careful. We, we would want to be careful not to change the scope, not to allow the vendor to change to change the scope in the interest of fairness. I mean, we could say that we wanted to change something in the scope via amendment, but yeah. uh, I also don't want to cut someone off if they have a if they have something that works in our framework that we didn't explicitly lay out. So, Alicia. So I'm wondering about that. If we, I know we, I mean, I'm sure we need some type of response, but if we don't, like if we just allow them to submit their bid in whatever way that they were going to submit it and whatever ideas that they have, is that something we can just review when we review our bids and decide if it works for us? Or I'm not sure if I really understand. Uh, yeah, I mean, where the definition of what works for us is it broadly complies with the scope of work that we laid out, then then yes, it's essentially yes. Right, uh, and and I'm, go no, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and, and I am not knowing entirely what to expect from uh, in response here. I, 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 I'll, I'll try to be vague because I don't, I don't know if someone will, if someone will propose something very elaborate or very simple. Uh, the, this is, it's kind of a, it's kind of an open question to me exactly what the nature of the responses will be. So I'm, I'm planning on being surprised by whatever we do get, but. I just, I have to step away for a sec. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's nine o'clock already. Okay. Yeah, we, we should sorry. stop. We yeah, should I'm... stop soon in any case. Oh, okay. Um, so... Anthony, I, I think your answer is fine. In other words, mm -hmm. yeah, send us, send us anything, but we're not able to change the scope of work, you know, simply because that's the bid process. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think the danger is that we will get some people who have a canned approach that they have used before and use everywhere uh, that isn't really quite a fit for what we're looking for, but they would try to sell it as something that is about, you know, what we want. Uh, and that, that can be tricky. Ms. Pat? I mean, that's likely what we're going to get anyways, because um, you have understood what Mr. Delaney just uh, read to us, is that they will use like whatever like audit form, format, whatever information that is already existing, they will not do community engagement to come up with recommendation for us is what they're asking. And so that boils down to quality. And that's not what we're looking for. We want, you know, a farm or individual that will do a thorough work. So I think I agree with your answers. I think your responses is, uh, I support it, yeah. 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 Okay, so I will be issuing an addendum to the IFB tomorrow that uh, changes the date in the first section and changes final plan to final report and also will answer those bidders questions. So I won't, I won't send that. That's fairly inconsequential. So I don't think I'll send it to the full committee. That's yes. not, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll just, I'll just I, issue it. Yeah. You can, you can say the subcommittee agreed you should go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and unless that would be the, the one. Yeah. We'll take responsibility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they want to be upset. They can be upset with us. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you, Ms. Marston. Thank you, Mr. Delaney, for your time. Oh my yes, God. Yes, I don't yes. envy your job at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I working two, late. Two working papers late. to write. Sorry, Ms. Oh, Marston. Good. 
Okay. Well, they're not papers, but you know, you have to because it's online, you got to do those discussion things. That's I right. gotta go oh, yeah, things. yeah. Well, with no further ado, are we ready to adjourn? Second, uh, 909. I'm gonna no get Paul for this one. Hearing no objection, <laughs> we are adjourned. Yeah, good night, everybody. Yeah, really. good night, good night, everyone. Everyone. Thank, you. Thank you. Good night, thanks, yeah, everybody. Good night.